Hello my SOC universe, the hour strikes midnight and yeah, strike back did also the North African teams uh, after, you know, so a knockout phase that was not going all their way, but today they reasserted themselves and kind of expectedly so. I think in both uh, matches today, uh, two matches with uh, between French speaking nations more or less. Um, the favorites went through, but it was everything from easy. Uh, also, not easy was what jersey should I wear. I decided to go with the, I think, tournament favorites at the moment. The moment Egypt went out, I think Algeria, with whatever we've seen, became tournament favorites. Um, over Tunisia, although the will be posting a jersey review video well we'll be wearing the same jersey but you know it's a nice jersey so why not wear it let's go to the games for that we had today um as i said two matchups it was actually interesting quarterfinal the first matchup were between uh benin and senegal were french-speaking nations as far as i know then um two english-speaking nations with uh nigeria and south africa and now today we have french french uh, quarterfinals. The early one was the matchup of the uh, quarterfinal. I mean, those were pretty uh, big names involved, and this is a matchup that has been happening quite a bit as as of late. I think in this decade, this was the third time that those two nations meet in the quarterfinal. Um, so that was uh, an added <laughs> bonus to that game, and it proved to be. I think it's fair to say the best quarterfinal uh, of all four of them. I can uh, easily say so. And while Algeria um, was the favorite, it was actually the Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, I must say Cote d'Ivoire, that actually started the game uh, better and had chances. But before we get to that, I'm almost forgetting, Jersey matchup. Um, I was actually surprised to see Algeria play in the green jerseys. I, I, would, I was expecting an orange versus white matchup, but I was pleasantly surprised. Yes, green blends a little bit more into the background, and in my Jersey River video you will see that I have a little bit of trouble with this particular Algeria away jersey. However, um, unusual color matchup. I mean, white would not have really worked and even if we pair white with green pants i really liked that it was chosen this way yes the Cote d'Ivoire had to go with white uh, socks instead of the customary green ones but you know it uh, looked fine i actually was really enjoying this color matchup and i also was enjoying at that at being how the Cote d'Ivoire was playing um especially uh with an uh, early shot that uh, the goalkeeper Raiz Mboli just tipped and um, it went on the post, I think, in the fifth minute. And you had the feeling that the Cote d'Ivoire will sooner or later score in that one. However, in the 20th minute, is exactly the opposite. It was a really nice uh, attacking move over um, uh, Mares. Then uh, it hits uh, Buneja, who was in a way the player of the match, although he didn't even play the full match. We'll come to that later. Who makes a cross in that uh, Feguli can put into the net. Note, I have a Fegoli jersey from Valencia, so uh, kind of made me smile a little bit. That's, you know, not that I picked it because of him. I want to have that great jersey. But yeah, Fegoli scores. 1-0 for Algeria, a little bit against the run of play, but you had the feeling that from that moment on, Algeria clearly had the upper hand. Uh, and, you know, it was played in Suez in the heat, uh, that actually played into the cards and I think um, Algeria clearly was the better team then. Uh, it still ends 1-0 at the halftime and right off the kickoff, uh, first minute after gave a penalty is given uh, when again Buneja is uh, running towards uh, goal uh, and Sylvain Gbou comes out and you know he probably doesn't touch him but it is clearly a foul because he comes out in such a wild manner that even if Buneja uh, is jumping it's because he's jumping to avoid uh, being badly hurt so Buneja gets the penalty he takes the penalty and in the 47th minute I think he hits the bar and this was kind of a deciding moment in the match because 2-0 Algeria is through um, 
Algeria still had a few chances, but I think at that moment then uh, the Cote d'Ivoire kicked a little bit more in, especially over Sierra Dia was a lot of working. Um, Zaha, you saw a lot. Max Gradel, you saw a lot. So I was really um, team of it where they came back. They used this um, uh, let off to show uh, something and in the 62nd minute it was really a uh, two play I think it's uh, Zaha and Kojia uh, running towards uh, the goal and like a hot knife through butter just managed to get there and Kojia with a really fine finish makes it 1-1 one, one in the 62nd minute. Then Algeria again was back on the front foot and Riyad Mahrez who was tirelessly working and you could clearly see that he is the most gifted player on on the field. He was maybe not having his best game, but he's clearly the most gifted player. And it was a really nice attacking move where he just takes a shot, gets past the goalkeeper, would have gone right into the corner. But uh, Mamadou Bakayoko saves it uh, with a nice clearance. That was a really, really big chance. Chances fell on both sides, but, you know, overtime uh, was looming. There was one uh, Cizaha. Badly miss hit a nice cross in. Uh, he didn't even pull it uh, across the touchline. It went in the uh, uh, out at, at the sideline. Really bad miss hit. So it goes to overtime, and overtime was characterized by two things: um, lots of possession for Algeria, and the better chances for the Cote d'Ivoire. Um, also, at that moment, uh, Mares was already out, and Buneja. In my opinion, Bunaja up until that point, he was the best player uh, for Algeria because I'd, I said it before in a video, he is a real pest. He is working hard, he is uh, riling up the um, uh, defenders and so on. I mean, he's a constant thorn. And um, if you're an opponent, you hate a player like that, but I really have an appreciation for it. Uh, this kind of striker and he's really tirelessly working but you could see when he got uh, substituted he basically I um, mean fell into tears because of his missed penalty and it didn't get better for him uh, so so much I can say um, over time Cote d'Ivoire yes this was now the chance where uh, Algeria could clear a few chances by the Cote d'Ivoire uh, and they got a big chance at the very end of uh, extra time where they actually took out Feguli and brought in uh, Andy Delors uh, who took the free kick in the 121st minute and just it missed by a hair. But again um, Cote d'Ivoire was slightly more dangerous in over uh, time but over the entirety of the game, I thought Algeria had just slightly the edge, but it was a very even matchup, a really great matchup that would have deserved a full stadium. I think this in a full stay stadium, and you, and you would talk all-time classic. This was a really great game. To penalties it goes, and per lack of draw, um, Algeria can start, and they have a really lucky start right from the get-go, because uh, Rami Bayense Baini, Hits it and the goalkeeper Gbo is just with the hand there but cannot save it. Cassie makes it very easy. Ben Slimani, who came on later, uh, makes it easy. Cornet makes it easy. Delors makes it easy. So there were really four uh, penalties where the goalkeepers had no chance. Then Wilfried Bonny comes, uh, steps up. He came on uh, in overtime and makes a mess out of his penalty. Uh, not only does he kind of miss hit it uh, by putting it just uh, slightly above ground and not very close to the post, you know, exactly the type of shot that goalkeepers love to save. At the moment he's taking the shot, I had a feeling that this is going to gonna, gonna be saved because the goalkeeper, uh, Raiz, uh, Mboli, I say Raiz because that's what, what, what's on his jersey, was already going for for the corner. If he's a little bit more, more aware of the goal, goal, if he chooses the other direction, it's not going to be saved. It is saved. Uh, was a relatively easy save. And then when, so it's 3-2, and when Unas uh, makes it 4-2, uh, you really um, knew that this is now high time for the Cote d'Ivoire to react. Gradel, who actually had this weird uh, bandaid here, which uh, drove me nuts at first, but uh, then, then there is, there was an injury. 
Gradel puts his penalty in, it's 3-4. Belaili can make it, and you could see on the bench. Uh, Algerians were already after the save on Boni, were already um, not celebrating, but you know, keep calm. But there were tears in the eyes, especially of our friend uh, Baghdad Buneja. And so he's really, Belaili, he will make it, he will make it. No, he will not make it because he hits the post. <laughs> Absolute disaster. They really chose Buneja there. Uh, who was again in tears, but not tears of joy. Now it was desperation again because he missed the penalty before in the game. They could have made it to nil and would have ended the game. So up steps Serie who is the captain of the team, and I understand that he's a tireless worker. Absolutely, I just always I was not too fond of his play, especially during this Afcon. Um, I always felt that he was a little bit how to say. He was messing things a little bit too much. Anyway, he steps up and produces the exact same penalty as Belayli. Hits from his was at the left post. Algeria is through and will play Nigeria now. In that's pretty much a great semi-final that um, you know North Africa versus South Africa. Algeria is a pretty darn good team, and Nigeria is one of the best teams in Africa of all time. So. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one. That will be the late game. Uh, the late game to Naden today pitted then the underdog Madagascar against Tunisia. And um, one reason why I did not choose Tunisia is because they have beaten. They, you know, went up against the underdog. And now I re uh, today I released my Group B jersey review, and you know, you know that I love the Madagascar home jersey. And then they play in red for next to no reason. Play in all green. Why can't you? If Tunisia plays in white, you can choose that. So uh, that was a little bit of a letdown. Uh, I did not see the first half hour of that game, but uh, from what I gathered from the commentator is that the game was kind of asleep. And then towards the end of the first half, uh, Tunisia slightly woke up, especially through Wabi Khazri um, and also Fer uh, Ferjani Sassi, who um, actually were a creative force uh, that created chances, but uh, they, no one really could find yet a breakthrough. Um, the game was played in the Al Salam Stadium in Cairo, which I really like with this huge video wall and the nice thing. This is probably the most impressive looking stadium in Egypt, <laughs> at least at AFCON Stadium. Second half, it was all Tunisia. Um, right off the get-go, uh, Wabi Khazri should have uh, or did score uh, a goal after a nice through ball. However, he was just uh, he was offside, so it was uh, chalked off. But a few, a few minutes later, Sassi is just a little bit too far, um, you know, too free at at, at box. He wants to curl it in, but he hits the butt cheek of uh, Thomas Fontaine and takes a deflection where the uh, goalkeeper Melvin Adrien cannot save it by any means. And a little bit later, the captain Zakni, Yusuf Zakni. Uh, makes it 2-0 and at that point the game is done and dusted. Um, there was one chance that I can imagine by, uh, that I can remember by um, Adriana, uh, but not really. I mean, he could, he was making appeal for a penalty, but really not much, much happening there. So um, it stayed for the longest time, 2-0. Uh, they could even afford to take Sassi off and Mzakni uh, off to uh, or standing ovations in a way. And in the end, Tunisia, when Madagascar really committed uh, numbers forward, Tunisia, Tunisia gets the third one to um, through uh, Sliti, who came on for um, Mzakni. So 3-0 Tunisia, they move on to the next round. And as I said, two North African teams moved on. And now if we look at the quarter uh, final and semi-final three, we see now that Senegal will meet uh, Tunisia and Algeria will meet uh, Nigeria. Uh, when I look at the teams that are involved, um, I have jerseys for three of these. Um, 
and I'm very happy that I decided really to get Tunisian and Algeria jerseys uh, this year. Um, the Algeria I always had on mind because of the Fennec, the Tunisian one, because I've been to Tunisia, so I want to get every jersey of every country that I've been to. Nigeria was a given that I gotta get this jersey. So Senegal is missing. And I'm so much staring at the moment at this wonderful Roma Senegal shirt from 2016-17. They were wearing it at the 2017 FCON. I just don't know whether I should. I want to buy it. I really want to buy it, but I'm not quite there yet. We'll see. Uh, I'm not sure if it would arrive on time if Senegal makes it to the final. Uh, at that time, I should have a Senegal jersey. It would make for a better picture, don't you think? I'm going to sleep over it and then I'll make a decision. Anyway, let me know what you would say. Um, Drop a comment below. Should I get the Senegal shirt? What do you think about the games today? Um, also, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.